What is going on GBA? I am the confusion and I am yours truly, your host. So welcome back to the second episode, week one of Around the Rhyhorn. Today I am with some different people, still with Spastic. What's up? Um, I'm also here with your guest coach, Jim Leader Geo. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> and finally, I'm here with another one of your Season 6 analysts, Robin. What's going on, everyone? Rob here. And we're not going to waste any time. The matches this week were absolutely insane. And as you can tell by the top, um, the theme this week is going to be sweeps because that is something that seemed very prevalent this week and something that we just thought was a really good idea to kind of like address and talk about this episode. So we're just going to hop right into their main topics and we'll just start it off with sweeps in general because I know when I think about sweeps, they're they're quick and you c- it takes a lot of setup in certain situations, you know. You ha- you have to have, you know, hazards, hazards, you know, breaking sashes. You have to make sure that sometimes the Pokemon you're setting up with has to have its own priority, like a Belly Drum Azumarill, or else other Pokemon can kind of out-prioritize your moves, even though you hit like a truck. So, I mean, what's your guys' thoughts on sweeping? Well, I'll start off by saying, um, as the most impressive sweep this week, no, uh, (laughs) it was insane. It was very insane. Well, definitely in recent seasons. Yeah, I mean, sweeps, um, it's interesting because the concept of sweeping ties pretty intimately with whether or not that Pokemon swept by setup or by like you were saying just really setting the playing field for it so for a lot of teams the way you set up a sweep is I know this Pokemon is fast enough to outspeed everything maybe it's scarfed and strong enough to do whatever 80% to this man's whole team but that's 80% so and I know I'll die in one hit for example if you're talking about really flimsy Pokemon so like you were saying set the stage you got to whittle down every member of this man's team or woman's before you can really <laughs> get into the whole the sweep department there. So yeah, it's absolutely. it's cool to think that there's that much thought that has to go into everything when you're prepping your team. I don't want to get swept, so how do I go about doing that? Do I try and level this playing field, keep all my Pokemon healthy? Am I going to try and uh, run taunt Pokemon, run uh, priority to try and counteract people setting up dragon dances etc etc so it it's such oh man that's why i love it it happens so much in the opening week and a good topic to yeah. talk about. <laughs> it was also crazy because in my opinion a lot of people think of sweep and say okay you're gonna set up right but not necessarily i think a great pokemon that has a lot of potential to sweep and not set up is a life orb adamant mammal swine the coverage and the priority on that thing if you whittle down just a couple mons that thing can actually go ham it has kind of the speed to take advantage of a few bulky mons and it absolutely hits like a truck that thing could wreck through so many teams ground ice coverage is amazing so a lot of people will think okay they're gonna start talking about a calm mind Cresselia. they're gonna start talking about a sword stance Absol. um we also saw in mogwai's um battle that jirachi heart like you know just stopped him and that pokemon just got to in a sense kind of sweep up and kill a lot of pokemon and it didn't need to set up it just needed to hide so you know there's a lot of situations where we can say okay setting up you'll sweep but there's a lot of other situations in which you can sweep as well yeah i agree there's there's a lot of thought that goes into sweeping a lot more than people would think Uh, sweeping is very underrated there's so many things that go into it do i have to wear down a team first with stealth stealth rocks and whatnot are there certain mons that i can set up on do i have to set up a memento on a certain pokemon there's a lot of things that people just don't see that actually go into it Especially with a limited roster. Especially, like, what if you don't have a Pokemon that can learn Memento, you know? So with a limited roster, your options to sweep become less, you know, like, whoa, how is he going to sweep me? It's like, okay, you know, this Pokemon can do this, this Pokemon can do this. I mean, he only has 11. He can't set up the sticky webs. He can't, you know, set up spikes or toxic spikes. So it makes it harder, in my opinion, to sweep in this type of format. But again, you know, because they're prepping for it. So that's why I feel like sweeps don't seem as prevalent in a draft league format as they do in, you know, standard Smogon play. But as we saw this week, they, they took over. They did well, really well. So um, I think we'll just jump into our next topic, which is planning for the whole sweep, which is team building. And it's so important. So, I mean, I kind of want to hear um, your insight, Gio, on how you usually team build for um, certain threats. Yeah, so uh, really good 
point to bring up that to keep this separate from like talking about it conceptually and then talking about it as far as team building is concerned for the league format because it really is a completely different beast when you bring six to the ladder on showdown for example you already know what your potential sweeper is and you can immediately you have to assess the team and see well where's the stop in this sweep when you're bringing 11 it's a little different because you see everything that could on their roster be a, a potential stop to that sweep but it, it's not always the setup mons aren't always dedicated sweepers for example a lot of times people will bring setup mons just to break a hole so another pokemon can clean up and stuff like that with this most recent week my goal against dan was to win with Absol by having it set up on Chansey. So I talked about that a little bit, and if anyone watched the battle from my point of view, there was one point when I was in with a um, with my Nidoking, and there was a good chance that I could have done a lot of damage to the Chansey, maybe even killed right. it if it had opted to stay in. But I didn't do that because I knew I needed that Chansey alive because that was one of the few Pokemon I could actually reliably Smart. set up a Swords Dance Smart. on. So with with as far as team building is concerned, you need to there needs to be one key component and that's the knowledge of where you're going to get your setup or the knowledge of where the sweep right. begins yeah it's it's absolutely crazy in my opinion to team build and you know some pokemon they don't um when they team build they'll just pack coverage and i think that's what dan expected you to do he expected you to have coverage for ferrothorn right he expected you to have you know iron tail or afterwards you realize play rough and that's the thing, because when you're predicting a certain team, especially when you're team building, it's hard because you can't really just prep for certain things. I think it's easier to just create your own team that'll work together by itself than try to have dedicated Pokemon for each individual team because you have six and you're trying to plan for 11. So it's hard, you know, it's very complicated to plan for all 11, but people try it. And I think that's more optimable than, you know, planning for six months that seem most obvious. I mean, it is it is always good to find the six mons that are like the biggest threats on their teams. Like, who are their potential sweepers, and who are their like big walls that can just sit in front of your team and take damage all day and not care. So you, I mean, yeah, you got to plan for the whole team because this is the draft format. You never know what they're gonna bring. But right. they're yeah, s setting up for six mons, like the big threats on your team, like Mega Absol. That is a huge offensive threat. You got to be able to prepare for it. Yeah. Also, um, when team building, people try to say, "If I bring this, it's too obvious. It's too obvious. They're gonna expect it." But sometimes I look and I'm just like, "But it's okay." We saw in um, Old Man Tup's battle against the San Jose Sharpedos against Tom, a Hurricane uh, Mega Pidgeot just crapped all over his team like it just it threw them out and yes it was predictable that he knew that's what mega pidgeot was coming to do but that doesn't make it bad that doesn't make it less likely to just hurl your team into you know craziness so and, i think that's also something you have to realize and with team building you can really take advantage of uh the idea that your opponent knows something predictable about your team a good example uh, just speaking from my own experience is how frequently i bring entei choice banded um because i can definitely use that to my advantage and i have in the past like the assumption that i'm going to bring a banded entei with e-speed and sacred fire and then people go well this thing is a monster what am i going to do to stop it and then i know sometimes that they will bring a mon in a very specific role like i can predict that their water type which could be offensive could be defense is, is gonna go defensive because it has to otherwise how are they going to stop entei it, you can yeah, use yeah. that to your advantage my predictability makes a member of their team more predictable and then and they take threats, a weak sometimes and, yeah. no you go ahead and then they take a weakness policy boosted solar beam to the face i <laughs> ah, got him <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy um you know, and we see things like that all the time, especially um, a lot of Pokemon this week just got three kills. Like we saw Latios on the Arcanana's team, it just got three kills. You know, we have a lot of Pokemon who just, you know, came in and just killed a few things. Claydol, Claydol got kills, like three of them. And you know, that's unexpected. That's something where you're like, this thing is gonna sit there, it's got a rapid spin, it's probably gonna hold a Colba Berry, it's probably gonna do this and that, but it ends up you know hurting your team more than you expect it so that's why team building can also be something that frustrates i know i know it frustrates a lot of people who are in a league because you can prep for hours upon hours 
and it could just backfire. It could just, you know, it might not work. What you predicted might not. So, you know, that's always hard when you're team building. It kind of gets into your mind. You're always playing mind games. But I mean, it could be healthy sometimes, mind games. <laughs> so um, I think we'll just move right on along into our debatable topic. Our debatable topic today is going to be bulk versus offense. And if you were to ask me, I'm definitely on the offensive side. I love being offensive. I love making sure I'm hitting hard because you could sit there and wall all day, but there's there's a certain point to where you can't do that anymore, to where pivoting around and working around a bulk, bulky like offensive kind of team isn't as effective as you'd think it will be. So, I mean, what's your opinions on bulk versus the offense? I like offense. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, you, obviously you have to be able to balance your team with defense and offense, but for me, it's a matter of breaking down my opponent's defenses and not letting them heal up, for example. Not letting them get the right mon in front of me. So, you know, running a lot of coverage or just making sure that I'm faster so that I can just take them out because yeah you can sit there and you know slack off you can recover you can heal bell all wish protect all day but eventually hey. they're going to break like it's more likely for a defensive team to break down than it is for an offensive team to run out of steam if you play it properly okay yeah i got to agree i mean I think I would consider myself a little bit more of a defensive player because for me what I like about offense is opportunistic offense um, you find a situation in which an offense a f offensive mon will contribute the most at this exact moment this is when an uh, offensive mon will add the most value to the team do the most damage come in against the wrong mon um, but I don't know that I would call myself an offensive player just by having that mentality because for me it's about I mean the whole point of this episode talking about like setting the stage both in team building and in the middle of the match and I think the way you do that is with defense I think to me when I've played hyper offense or more offensive teams I feel like you're kind of just you're throwing out attacks and yeah they might do a lot of damage but then you're going to get revenged and I don't have a switch in so I, who do I sack and then this Pokemon comes in like offense versus offense a lot of the time they're these blazing quick matches it just becomes did i choose the right pokemon to sack at the right time and you're just throwing offense now, obviously we can all agree that uh, being able to have your selection of offensive and defensive in the draft format is really beneficial yeah. but i guess for me i just i prefer the defensive i prefer having that x factor removed like oh this guy brought coverage for me okay well it's it's still not a two hit ko versus Oh, this guy brought coverage for me, and I got one shot because I was not expecting it, which is, happens a lot on hyper offense teams. Right. So I, I guess that's, I guess I'd consider myself a defensive player more than an offensive player. All right. So I, I have two comments. First of all, is that I think one of the most offensive attacks is taunt. I think taunt is very can really break down a wall more than any other move. Like, it, it works very effectively. You can't run a mental herb on every Pokemon. You're not gonna, you could switch out. It's like a leech seed, you know? It's not stuck with you. But taunt can just stop something and allow you to hit something hard. Exactly. And I think I think that's a really good opportunity. Taunt is a very underrated move that should be definitely be used a little bit more because taunt has a lot of viability. There are so many Pokemon where you know this thing gets recovery, this thing will toxic me, and this thing will set up. Yep. And you could stop all three of those with one attack. So I think that's also really good. But we also saw a very bulky matchup. One of the most, I think, amazing matches I have yet to see. Which is the battle between the New Orleans Pelippers and Newcastle United. Such a bulky battle. The, the battle was over 50 turns. But it was so good. Because it was, it was hard to watch. There were two bulky sides just having at it. You have... Klefki and Suicune up against an Umbreon and a defensive Landorus and you're just trying to move around and whittle each other's team and it really just went down to who whittled each other's team more effectively or to a certain point where the late sweeper could kind of come in and finish it up. So it's hard to you know see whether the bulk will take you to the end or the offense will. Exactly. M moving on to that or moving adding on to the taunt comment you make is kind of my battle uh, my style of battle which is I kind of will sound like Switzerland here 
I prefer bulky offense, kind of in between. Um, yeah, I like my I like my offensive minds to also be able to take a hit and even maybe transition into some sort of wall, in the in the way that taunt won't really affect them as much. They can dish out a hit just as just as hard as they can uh, take a hit. Right. Yeah. So you know what? Let's lighten up the mood. We're gonna go quickly into our lightning round. Basically, we're gonna play a little game this time. No questions. It's just gonna be a coverage game, where I'm going to be asking. Um, I'm gonna be actually. There's gonna be 15 Pokemon for all three of you. So 15 for Geo, 15 for Spastic, 15 for Robin, Ow. and I'm going to name these Pokemon one by one, and next to that Pokemon, I'm also going to give you a type. So for example, I will say, okay, Spastic, Weavile and the fighting typing. And you're going to have to think very quickly, does Weavile get any fighting coverage? In this case, you would say yes. Yes, it, it gets does, it gets It gets low kick. There you go. You already know. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> You know, so basically that's how it's going to work. We're going to go through 15 Pokemon very, very quickly. And the answer could be no. You could be like, no, that thing does not get that kind of coverage. And I don't want to hear any shockwaves or digs, please, okay? Like, <laughs> if it's not coverage, it's not coverage. So let's just jump right into it. I guess we'll just leave it you, Spastic. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, all right, why not? Let's do this. <laughs> let's do it. All right, ready? Oh, no. Blastoise, Dragon Typing. Yes, it gets Dragon Pulse. Regular Altaria Fairy. Yes, uh, Disarming Voice. Does Arcanine get Electric coverage? Wild Charge. Does Latios get Fire coverage? No. Yeah, maybe I should just mention we're not going to include Hidden Powers. I was, like, uh. I, was, I was like, okay, not Hidden Power, not Hidden Power, not Hidden Power. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have mentioned that before, but hey, we mentioned it now. Alright, let's just keep going. Does Hippowdon get Water coverage? No. Does Braviary get fighting coverage? Brick Break, I believe. It gets superpower. Crap. So you were right that it gets fighting coverage, but it gets superpower. Crap. Does the Blade get fighting coverage? Yes, sacred, uh, sacred Sword. Does Skunk Tank get fire coverage? Mm, no. Yeah, it gets Fire Blast and Flamethrower. Crap baskets. <laughs> does, does Breloom get flying coverage? Aerial Ace. Nope, Damn. Breloom doesn't learn Aerial Ace. Does Mega Beedrill know ground coverage? I'm almost scared to answer now, thanks. Um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Mega, Mega Beedrill learns Drill Run. Oh, that's uh, right, does, it does. Oh my god. Does Jolteon Smogon, get ice me. coverage? <laughs> Does who get ice coverage? Does Jolteon... Yeah. Jolteon get ice... No. No. Does Ferrothorn get poison coverage? Yes. Yeah. What does it get? Do you know? Poison jab? There you go. Does Keldeo get ice coverage? Yes. Icy wind. Does Sylveon get psychic coverage? Yeah. It gets Psy Shock and Psychic. And there you go. Alright. Those are 15 longs. That was awesome. No <sighs> <laughs> good right, job, let's, good job. Let's go on. I feel like I'm back um, in school. What is this? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, pop quiz, pop quiz. It's everyone. summer. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> why, right. why do you do this? <laughs> okay, Robin, you ready? Oh, okay, I know I'm gonna get destroyed in the comments for this. <laughs> oh lord, are you ready? Everyone's gonna be okay. Ready? Does Bisharp get grass coverage? Mm, no. No. Does Galvantula get ghost coverage? It does not. Does Golurk get fighting coverage? Uh, dynamic punch? Nice. Does Hitmonchan get dark coverage? Hitmonchan get dark coverage. I don't think it does. It does not. Alright, Granbull get ice coverage. Does it get ice punch? Yeah, does Excadrill okay. get rock coverage? Um, rock slide? Yep. Does Nido King get electric coverage? <laughs> Nido King get electric coverage. I don't. I don't think it does. Ah, yes. Oh, Geo's gonna kill you. Yes. Thunderbolt. <laughs> Thunderbolt G and thunder. <laughs> no. Come on. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's Sorry. keep going. It doesn't does make any infinite? sense. <laughs> does in Nido King has so much coverage? Don't even start. <laughs> does Infernape get water coverage? Infernape get water coverage. Obviously, it gets water punch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta watch out for There's... that water punch, man. 
All right. Does Embor get water coverage? Uh, water pulse. No, Scald. 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 Yeah, Embor gets Scald. Does Heracross get bug coverage? <laughs> <laughs> Mega Horn? I, 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 I had to throw an easy one in there. Okay. No, no bug coverage whatsoever. <laughs> I deserve that one. Ignore the fact that it's a bug type. <laughs> <laughs> Does Absol get steel coverage? Absol gets steel coverage. Um, It gets... Uh, that one that misses a lot. Iron Tail. <laughs> Iron Tail, there you go. Does Dawn Fan get grass coverage? Does Dawn Fan get... I don't think it does. Dawn Fan learned Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb is what I meant <laughs> to say. No? So, I got that <laughs> one does right. Blissey, does Blissey get Bolt Beam? Uh, does Blissey get Bolt Beam? Probably. It does. Alright, that's it. Nailed it. Every <laughs> single one right. <laughs> Well, yep, all right, good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and gym leader Geo, you are up to ah, last. Dun, dun, dun. Best for I've got to let you know, this first one might throw you for Oh, no. I, I don't even know. The, I don't even know the answer to this question. Oh, no. <laughs> Does, Does get Smeargle fired? get ground coverage? <laughs> <laughs> Smeargle only learns one move. It's sketch. It's normal type. Sorry, guys. Next. Easy. Nice. All right, good. You didn't fall for the trick. Starmie, <laughs> does it get Bolt Beam? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Does Metacham get fire coverage? Fire Punch. Does Magneton get fire coverage? No, has to be HP Fire. Nice. Does Heliolisk get ground coverage? Oh, shoot. Uh, Heliolisk learns Dig, but you said Dig doesn't count. Actually, it doesn't even learn Dig. It doesn't learn Dig? It doesn't learn Dig. What? It's a it does learn Dig. thing. Does it really? Showdown lied to me? Showdown well, is a lie. Well, I think I know where I think I know where Tom is coming from. All right, let's just <laughs> <think> <laughs> he learns bulldoze as well. Are you for real? Nice. Right, well. <laughs> Point through the mirror. Yeah. Mud right. slap. <laughs> yeah, I was about oh, to say mud, mud slap for HP sure. Mud slap that much. <laughs> All right, wait. Does Gyarados get flying coverage? Bounce. Nice. Does Fortress get electric coverage. Uh, Volt switch. Nice. Does Pinsir get fighting coverage? <laughs> yes. Close combat. <laughs> Does Whimsicott get flying coverage? No. Hurricane! Yes, it gets Hurricane! It gets Hurricane? It does. Wow. It gets Hurricane! Not bad, Whimsicott. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does Victini get ice coverage? Uh, it, it gets Glaciate. Yes. Yes. Does Drapion get ground coverage? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna say yes. It gets Earthquake. Yeah, it gets Earthquake. <laughs> Does Claydol get bug coverage? Signal Beam. Yep. Does Entei get fighting coverage? Nope. Nope. Does Ambipom get rock coverage? Mm. Ambipom. I, I feel like it doesn't. It does not. Does Togekiss get flying coverage? I know, yeah. I threw another one. <laughs> yeah, yes. Does, uh, does, Kyurem back, does Kyurem Black get electric coverage? Uh, doesn't it get, like, Bolt Strike or Fusion Bolt? It gets fusion both, bolt. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then we got Weezing. Does it get fire coverage? Yeah, it gets Flamethrower and fire. And bolts. lastly, does my Lotic get dragon coverage? Yeah, Dragon Tail. Yeah, I was thinking Dragon Falls, but yeah, it does get Dragon Falls. It gets cool. All right, that was fun. All right, that's pretty cool. What'd I get, so, 14 um, out of 15? I missed Hurricane? I don't know. I think I yeah, think the... Uh, yeah, you only missed actually, the Hurricane yeah, one. You only missed the Hurricane. You caught me on that heel disc, I gotta say. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nice. pretty good. Um, and I'm, all right, so um, just to kind of wrap everything up, we're going to just hear some last thoughts on this segment, What's Your Thoughts? And the question is, in your opinion... What is the most effective way to set up? And I think I'll just let you know mine initially. And mine is in the beginning of a battle, just leading with offense. It might not clean up your game, but like you were saying before, Geo, punching holes in a lot of the Pokemon's team can allow other Pokemon to clean up later. So I feel if you want to set up a Swords Dance or a Nasty Plot or a Dragon Dance, I like doing it like with like turn one to turn five to try to scare out the opponent. No one really expects these first turn setups and push a lot of things up against the wall so that other Pokemon can kind of take it down um, after they've been one down. But um, let's go through your thoughts. Okay, there's only one way to set up and win. Save Crest for the last Mon, set up con mines and sweep. <laughs> oh my god. Crest, why? It's the Crest most efficient why? way. <laughs> 
Cresselia is absolutely disgusting. I mean, in a similar vein to what Robin said, ignoring Cresselia, you know, banishing the moon duck out of our thoughts for a minute. <laughs> duck, duck, goose! No! <laughs> <laughs> DDG. We never mention yeah. that again. Oh yeah, we can't you say it anymore. You know the true nature, but yes. we do not speak of this. All oh, right, we can't say the name. I'm sorry. I've, I've yes. betrayed. I have. The duck I'm that must say, not I'm be named. I'm gonna cut named. it out, but I'm not gonna cut it out. Okay, <laughs> no. well. The duck that must not be named. Um, <laughs> honestly, setting up with a mod, for example, Slowbro, for example, it has mm-hmm. really high defense. But if you set up some calm minds, then you can yeah, just. Both. You can just sit in front of your opponents and take whatever hits that can come at you and then just proceed to Skull, Psyshock, you name it, you wreck it. I mean, so setting up defensively and offensively, you know, Calm Mind and Bulk Up are uh, yeah, really I good ways that. of doing it. Yeah, to add on to that, I think one of the oh. best ways to set up is increasing your speed as along with another stat because that way a mind can... A mon dedicated to switch into you won't be able to outspeed, or an offensive switch in won't be able to outspeed and kill you. It, in in yeah, the case of like setting up a sword stance with a slower mon, you you might just have to switch out right away if they send in like a wall breaker. Yeah, unless you're scallopied and you can set up your speed along with you, along with your attack, you can't really do that. Sadly, there's no special variation of dragon dance, but I mean. Quiver Dance um, is the closest thing, which combines all three of thing. the best features. Special attack, spec defense, and speed. Yeah. Shell smash, guys. Shell smash. Shell smash. Wow. Yeah. That's... What's the most... What's the most used smell... Oh, my God. Smell Cloister. smash? <laughs> smell smash. <laughs> smell smash. What's the most used smell smash? That's... Uh, I think it's Cloister, isn't Cloister, it? Cloister, I think. Cloister. I think it's Cloister. But um, we do have Gorbis in the league this season, yeah, so I'm excited to see Gorbis that thing. Gorbis with that shell smash pass. Oh no. my god, smash oh pash, no. smell pash, smell, S- smell pash, smash. I'm smell done. pash, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I quit, I can't do these things, I don't know how to say tongue twisters. How I'm do done. words? <laughs> how, how do you learn English? Oh my god. Okay, well, guys, um, there's only I... <laughs> one way to sweep. I think we know. I, uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna All share right. this. Yeah, yeah, give us some insight, everyone be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, for me, it's scout first sweep or scout first okay. set up next because the the risks of setting up early i do agree with you that sometimes an early setup can catch people off guard and can you punch one unexpected hole and that puts the person playing from behind the eight ball the entire rest of the game but for me you need to know what you're up against and while you can have a pretty good idea in the league format you got to scout it out first because all it would have taken was you know one scarfer here or one assault vest there that you're not expecting and all of a sudden yeah, even a focus mind can, setup huh even a focus ash can just stop the whole setup yeah you know? absolutely so it, it helps a lot to kind of get a view of the opponent's team um because even then like a lot of the time you can set up once take out one pokemon and then be like i'm gonna save this mon for later i'll set up again i i will find another opportunity you know but to you can even use that setup to scout and i, I think right. that's the most important thing the knowledge you have of your opponent's team is way more valuable Right. Well, thank you all for coming by and watching this week's episode of Ryan the Ryan Horn. Thank you to our guests, being Gym Leader Geo and Robin. Thanks for coming along. No problem. And, um, that That is all the time we've got. Don't forget to subscribe for more and follow us on our Twitter and our website, which is right there on the screen. That is all the time we've got. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>